greetings once again so this will also be a topic about another topic about patterns however these will be mainly based on the newer versions the newer versions of patterns that actually have come into quite a large popularity over the past few years so they are harmonic patterns okay so over here this page shows a brief introduction on what all on what the harmonic patterns are actually about and the next thing that we want to get into okay before we get into that for this particular slides we will also be going through the we will also be going through the animation we will just be going through the animations and slides so you will roughly know the sequences okay and we will still make comments however we'll we will not be directly commenting on the notes we will be commenting on definitions and also our opinions on what is going on okay so this is also basically our way of redefining redefining and explaining the concepts in price action patterns and the main idea is for you to also understand why things fell and why things actually work okay so i mean this particular page you can read it if you want to it is actually meant to be a joke just for some ice breaking introductions before we actually get into the topic and for this one harmonic patterns they are we are actually going to brief there are actually many different variations but we will divide it into a b c d all the way to x a b c d two drives three drives and phi yet again. What is phi? Phi is the Fibonacci ratios. However, we will not be diving directly into Fibonacci ratios. However, we will be speaking more generally on fractals. Okay, harmonic patterns actually occur because of fractals, not because of the pattern itself. Prices. There is no story behind the pattern of prices, and so on. Okay, so you can actually read all of this. So there I make some statements over here to get your mind running and thinking what is going on in the charts. Okay, let us begin with the first harmonic pattern, the two drive pattern. Okay, so this is the easiest pattern to spot, okay? So how do you actually spot it? Prices start from a low, it makes a higher high, a higher low, and then a higher high. So this is the easiest way to identify the two drive pattern. Okay, fairly simple. So, how does it actually work? Look at D, okay? Look at D right there. What happens at D? D actually, when, when prices actually make a higher high, it breaks out of the resistance, the B, the higher high, it breaks out the higher the high and produces D, okay? So once it actually completes the D leg, this would be the second drive okay so most people will actually be placing in their trades at the 1.272% 1 to 1.414% and the reason why they actually place their trade entries at those particular levels is because they actually say that the 1.272% expansion of A to B is actually a very powerful golden ratio which doesn't actually make sense because all the numbers are actually just imaginary the only reason why the 1.272 percent to the 1.414 percent actually works is because there is a high probability or high chance that there could be a supply zone in that particular area and if this was to be a bullish uh, pattern you will actually find that at demand okay so now if prices actually make a sell from the D lag it will go all the way down to one moment it will go all the way down to the 78.6 percent or 88.6 percent of AD and you can actually see it right happening right now and this actually shows a cipher pattern completed but we will not be going into the cipher pattern for now we will be going into the three drive patterns okay so what happens if the two drive pattern fails if the two drive pattern fails 
yeah, price action traders will always have will always have another escape. They will call it a three drive pattern. So, in other words, the three drive patterns is actually they actually try to say that the three drive pattern actually shows confirmation, and then they will start to talk about context. You gotta see the trend. You gotta see this. You gotta see that. They have so many SOPs and rules, while it actually puts them. It does actually give them an edge, but the problem with that particular edge is it's actually an edge because it is there is a probability that it will fail. Okay, so I'll put it into layman terms if the two drive pattern fails, it will then turn into a three drive pattern. Okay, so how do you actually draw a three drive pattern? Is you actually have to look right over here one moment, this one. Okay. It makes the third leg to the 1.272% or to the 1.414% of C to D. Okay? And that is where you can actually take your profit. So you can actually see the comparison between the 2 drive profit length and the 3 drive profit length. And then you can actually also see a support trend line right there. So technically, I mean, the funny thing about price action traders and price action pattern traders is that they will actually claim that they always, they somewhat always contradict themselves. Why do I always say they contradict themselves? It's because they say trade, the trend is your friend. So they trade the trend. But if you were to actually trade the three drive or two drive pattern, you're actually trading against the trend. Okay, so putting that all aside, you can actually read what we have written here. It is a brief introduction on on how we actually how we actually define harmonic patterns. Okay, we are not actually fans of harmonic patterns. We don't actually believe it works. So here we provide our we are actually providing our logical arguments to why it works or why it does not work and why you should not actually be using it. So there are many scenarios. You can actually read that in this particular page. Uh, particular page. Also, you can actually read more scenarios here. This is another scenario example. This is also another scenario example, which you may read. And these are some more thoughts on what we actually assume harmonic patterns to actually be. So let's get into the first and most well-known harmonic pattern. So you can actually read a, you can read the history of the Gartley pattern. So there is a variation of the Gartley pattern, which is a back pattern. It looks the same. Most people will actually say, oh, one is better than the other, and some will actually say that uh, it is totally different and it should not be used in the same context. But let me tell you the truth, it is the same freaking thing, okay? You don't actually have to even bother about looking for the accuracy of the levels because those Fibonacci ratios are all imaginary, okay? So we start from X to A. X to A, and to get B, B is actually a 38.2 retracement to 50% retracement of X, A, and or, this is for the bad pattern, for the Gartley pattern, it will be a 61.8 retracement of XA. And C will be a 38.2 to 88.6 retracement of A to B. However, for the Gartley pattern, it will be a 61.8 to 88.6 retracement of A to B. Okay? And finally, you have D, which is the last leg. Okay? So you can actually read this yourself and the whole idea for this is you are actually trying to identify the pattern completion at D in order for you to target your TP and also your stop losses. So over here actually we're going to explain a bit about the Gartley and bad pattern. Okay, X is the initial move. Okay, it all begins from the impulsive moves. Okay, impulsive move. So this is the initial move, price move in a strong steady move. We do not know when it will stop, but eventually we know once the AB retracement happens. Okay, at A, this is where resistance is created. Resistance is created and traders have their level set. Okay, then at B, this is where support is uh, recreated and Fibonacci traders will be placing in their buy entries 
normally with their stop loss at the next lower ratio. And C, C is Okay, those that have bought at B have their TP at C. However, sadly, the institutions placed in sell orders at the supply and C, the resistance at C was never hit. So those that actually sold early, early sellers are the, are the only ones that actually got in. So if you're actually waiting to sell at C, you might, be, you might miss the train. Okay, and at D, D actually is where prices broke the pivot level and those buyers those buyers at B either broke even or they hit their stop losses so you can actually read more about this yourself and I actually miss I actually did not miss okay I intentionally missed out pivot points okay so there are these there is another indicator known as pivot points or pivot levels or whatever it is those are basically just another form of support and resistance however it's calculated differently I can't remember the calculation because it's the most kind of somewhat the most useless calculation that I've ever seen okay so the next one will be some more diagrams to actually explain possibilities on on situations where more patterns will actually form so over here you can actually see what looks like a bat or guardly pattern within a consolidation triangle and how prices may react to the consolidation triangle which is actually a search for liquidity so basically this is where liquidity can be located a form of accumulation or you can actually include fractals so over here you can actually see support and resistance fractal 1 fractal 2 3 and 4 where you can identify that how actually prices react and move based on certain pricing di uh, pricing dimensions. Okay, the next one we actually have is the butterfly or crab pattern. Okay, so a lot of people want to say it's different. Let me tell you the truth, it is the same thing. It's a failure of one another. So why do I actually say it's a failure of one another? When the bad pattern or the godly pattern fails, this is what actually happens, okay? So we actually show you, it actually forms very similarly. B is the 78.6 retracement of XA for the butterfly pattern, and it's a 38.2 to 61.8 retracement of XA for a crab pattern. And for C, C is a 38.2% to 88.6% retracement of A to B. This is for both the butterfly and the crab pattern. However, D okay so D what actually happens at D D is the 1.272% extension or expansion of A to X for the butterfly pattern and D is a 1.414% extension of X to C so this is for the crab pattern so what basically happens over here if you look at X alright so this is where your TP will be if you look at X over there what does X actually represent X actually represents a support and D broke out of the support so basically for the bet and godly pattern prices are not meant to break out of D a uh, break out of the point X however in this particular case D the D leg broke out of the support at X this pattern actually proves that the godly pattern and the bad pattern is most likely to fail and if it fails you can just convert it to a butterfly or crab pattern okay so what am I actually talking about this is what I'm talking about so you can actually see that a crab pattern actually com made a completion at the support and resistance fractal 1 and it went down nicely so if you actually took this crab pattern completion you will make a significant amount of profits which is good okay I'm not gonna say it's a bad trade it's a good trade but it was a lucky trade for you and over here if you actually made a bad pattern completion you can actually see the bad pattern completion it did not actually complete because it was over completed prices broke out the support and resistance fractal too and made the crab pattern so you can actually say that the crab pattern is is the backup plan for the bat or godly pattern and don't try to tell me a lot of some of you are actually some of you may be experts in harmonic trading 
So if you're an expert in harmonic trading, can you actually explain to me why these certain ratios you guys talk about actually work? It does not work, okay? So you can actually draw it. You don't have to be accurate with uh, patterns actually. So then we have come to the next one, which is the cipher pattern. The cipher pattern is the opposite, okay? It's not the support that fell. It's actually the point A that fell, okay? We'll get into that later on. So we have B. B is the 38.2% retracement or 61.8% retracement of X to A. C is the 1.272% or 21.414% extension of X to A. And you can actually see that C was where prices broke out of the resistance at A. So for a godly pattern or for a bad pattern, prices will be, lo will be below the resistance. However, for the cipher pattern, you can actually see point C, it is above A, it is not below A. So this actually proves that the bad and godly pattern is actually a failure, okay? Because if it fails, it becomes the cipher pattern. And finally, you have D, which is a 78.6% to 88.6 retracement of X to A, and these are your targets. Okay, so what actually happens if the cipher pattern fails? Okay, so what actually happens is you can actually see the differences right over here. Okay, this is the cipher pattern. And if you notice, point D, point D is sitting very closely to point X, okay, which is the support. It did not break out of the support at X. However, for this particular example, you can actually see the last leg actually extends out from uh, extends out from the support at X. Okay, so basically this shows that the cipher pattern, if it fails, we will call it a shark pattern. So basically, what is the shark pattern? The shark pattern is actually a combination of the cipher pattern and a butterfly pattern. So yeah, it, it runs in the family. So if one fails, another will fail. Okay, so then you have point B, which is 38.2% to 88.6% retracement of X to A, and following up will be C, which is a 113% retracement inverted, okay, of A to B. So I'm not going to actually explain this. You can, ex you can actually identify it yourself. It is a reciprocal ratio, okay. Some say it is a one point, it's a 1.130% extension of X to A and sometimes it is confused with the cipher formation, the cipher pattern, okay? But basically, it is not to be confused. You know why? It is the same thing. Who cares about the ratio? Okay, moving on, we come to point D, okay? D is actually the 88.6% to 113% reciprocal uh, ratio of X to C and you can actually see it broke out of support X. That's the only thing you need to know actually All right, and then this is your targets and Stop loss, okay, so identify where your targets and stop losses will be so you can actually see these patterns are actually some sort of formation to actually make you believe something actually works Okay, you don't actually question it a lot of people do not actually question the harmonic patterns and it looks like it works. It works 50% of the time. Okay, it works 50% of the time. But the whole problem with it is it is so obvious to know where your stop losses are. Okay, you are predefined. You are predefined into taking a trade based on a given a given SOP, a given standard operating procedure. Okay? So so predefined, okay? So you do not want things to be predefined. Why don't you want things to be predefined? It's because someone can tell you to put your stop loss there. And if everyone places their stop losses at a particular level, I'm pretty sure there is going to be some smart person that he, if he knows that all your stop losses are going to be at that particular area, then most likely he is going to manipulate that particular level all right so this is these are the things that we actually want to inform you guys when you actually are 
doing these sorts of trades. So most probably, I do not know. Okay, make let me make an emphasis right here, because I don't. I just don't want to be bashing every single price action methodology, because there might be some truth to it. Okay, maybe probably initially when they were actually finding these patterns, it is actually to find liquidity. But throughout the years, it became somewhat quite mainstream that it lost its edge, okay? So basically, the institutions, they shifted their trading plan, they shifted their SOPs or whatever, they shifted their manipulation. So whatever you want to call it, but maybe that's what the founders of all these patterns actually were thinking, okay? So basically, you have this one, which is the XABCD. In other words, it's called the 5-0 pattern, okay? You see, it does not actually stop. So basically, this is what you will call a shark pattern that fails, okay? Well, not basically a shark pattern that fails. You can actually call it... It's actually a combination of the two drives with the shark pattern. I mean, however you actually want to see it. You can actually read this yourself, but the only thing that you actually add on is the D lag. Okay, the only thing you actually add on is the D lag, and you have all these variations. Okay, you have all these variations. However, what we actually want to tell you right now is something really, really cool. Okay, something really, really cool. We call it the frostbite pattern, okay? This pattern was founded by us, okay? It starts from X, it starts from X1, and what actually needs to happen next is a bearish godly, and after that, a modified 5-0 pattern, or ABCD pattern, then you need it to combine with a bullish butterfly, and the next one, a bearish neo godly, we have created the bearish neo godly and finally it must have the bullish cipher okay this pattern actually must combine together to create the frostbite pattern okay and this is a very very high risk to reward pattern sounds cool right let's identify how we can actually use it okay just kidding there is no such pattern we made it all up okay there is no such pattern okay we were just kidding what we actually why did we actually do this is because we want to emphasize the point that a lot of traders will naively believe anything just because I give you this indicator you're gonna believe it just because I give you a pattern you're going to believe it just because I give you something you are going to believe it so this is the problem with a lot of things. Why traders don't actually grow is because they don't try to identify, they don't try to find out, they don't try to question. Okay, even even for this particular course or this particular program in Minted Seed, what I am actually doing right now is asking all the questions. I'm asking all of you to think about the questions, and a lot of people do not ask me the questions back. Okay. They don't ask me the right questions. They they still revolve their thinking around patterns and candlesticks. They don't actually revolve their thinking on how prices can move through manipulation. How can it move through liquidity? How can it move through supply and demand? They don't actually ask these questions. Okay, so you can actually read. We have actually placed some arguments right over here. So if you want to see some arguments where we actually make comparisons. And besides that, we try to make comparisons and explanations a little in this particular page about supply and demand. And the whole reason is because what you have gone through previously is very, very traditional. And we will not talk about all these traditions, uh, these traditional techniques. There's tradition one, two... There is tradition three, and you also have tradition four. So we will be explaining all of these, not now, but we will be explaining it in. We will be explaining it in section three and four. So the recap is all about technical analysis. Now you have been through the roots, the twigs, the trunk, the branches, and you also have been through the leaves. And if you combine it all together, you have finally come to 
<clears throat> the flowers, which is actually the details, okay, the pretty stuff, the, the stuff that makes people look at the tree, okay. So, but that's the whole thing. Flowers are beautiful, okay, just like harmonic patterns. It looks so beautiful, it looks so professional on the charts, but just like flowers, it will one day wither, okay. So, we talk about probability again. So if we actually talk about probability, remember all of these are to be used as confluences, okay? Meaning must be found in it. And make sure there is equilibrium, okay? There is balance. What is balance? Think about it carefully, okay? What is balance? Balance is all about searching for best prices for liquidity. And we will be heading into our next topic, which is the fruit, where we talk about candlestick patterns. And we will be talking more about equilibrium in the next topic. So that's it for this particular topic. We'll see you in the next one. And thank you very much for your time. Okay?